Recently, the Canadian government officially ended the policy allowing visitors to apply for work permits while inside the country. This is a significant shift from the temporary measure introduced during the COVID-19 pandemic. In this video, we'll break down what this change means for anyone looking to work and settle in Canada, especially if you had plans to switch from a visitor visa to a work permit. We will also dive into alternative pathways for permanent residency PR, now that the visitor work permit option is off the table. So, whether you're an international student, a skilled worker, or just exploring your options to move to Canada, this is the video you don't want to miss. But before we get started, take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any important updates on Canadian immigration. Share this video with anyone who's thinking about coming into Canada, these changes are important. Now, let's get started. In August 2020, at the height of the pandemic, Canada introduced a special policy that allowed visitors to apply for job-supported work permits without leaving the country. This was a temporary measure aimed at addressing labor shortages and helping both employers and visitors stuck in Canada due to global travel restrictions. But as of August 28, 2024, that policy is no longer in effect. If you're currently in Canada on a visitor visa, you can no longer apply for a work permit while staying in the country. Applications submitted before that date will still be processed, but moving forward, visitors must exit the country to apply for work permits abroad. This policy change is part of Canada's broader immigration strategy aimed at tightening the number of temporary residents and addressing concerns about misuse of the system. Why was the visitor work permit policy ended? The discontinuation of this policy is rooted in several key reasons. 1. Preventing misuse of the system. One of the main concerns was that the visitor work permit policy was being exploited by individuals and bad actors who bypassed the proper channels to secure employment in Canada. By ending this policy, the Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, IRCC, aims to ensure that only those who follow the correct procedures can work in the country, reducing unauthorized work and fraud. 2. Crackdown on Immigration Fraud in recent years, immigration fraud has been a rising issue in Canada. A notable example was the case of 700 students who were admitted to Canadian institutions using fake acceptance letters. Most of these students had no idea their documents were forged, and they faced serious legal and immigration troubles. By rolling back certain policies, the IRCC is trying to create a more secure and regulated immigration process. 3. Managing the number of temporary residents. The IRCC has been making concerted efforts to control the number of temporary residents in Canada. The visitor work permit policy contributed to a growing number of temporary residents, and now with the ending of this policy, the Canadian government aims to balance its labor needs while protecting the immigration system's integrity. Impact on temporary foreign worker levels in Canada the end of the visitor work permit policy is not an isolated change. It's part of a larger set of adjustments to Canada's Temporary Foreign Worker Program, TFWP, which aims to manage the number of low-wage workers and ensure Canadian jobs are prioritized for Canadian citizens and permanent residents. 1. Changes to LAMIA Processing As of September 26, 2024, Canada will no longer process Labor Market Impact Assessment, LMIA, applications for low-wage positions in regions with a high unemployment rate. If you're applying for a job in a census metropolitan area where unemployment is 6% or higher, this new rule will apply to you. This change aims to protect jobs for local workers. 2. Reduced employment duration for low-wage workers. The maximum employment duration for temporary foreign workers in the low-wage stream has also been cut down to one year. In addition, employers can now hire only up to 10% of their workforce through the TFWP. These restrictions are meant to reduce reliance on foreign labor in sectors with low wages and ensure more opportunities for Canadians. 3. Reversing pandemic-era policies During the pandemic, many temporary measures were introduced to address labor shortages. For instance, employers were allowed to hire up to 30% of their workforce under the low-wage stream of the TFWP. But with labor market conditions normalizing, the IRCC is rolling back these policies to pre-pandemic levels. Temporary resident levels to be regulated for the first time. Another significant announcement from Immigration Minister Mark Miller is that, for the first time, the number of temporary residents in Canada will be included in the annual immigration levels plan. This plan, which traditionally focused only on permanent residents, will now factor in temporary residents like foreign workers and students. This is a landmark change, as it signals the government's intent to manage not only who gets to stay permanently, but also who can temporarily work or study in Canada. Along with this, the government is also considering revising the permanent resident levels to better align with Canada's labor market needs. Alternative Pathways to Permanent Residency PR, in Canada Although the visitor work permit option is now off the table, there are still many other pathways for foreign nationals to achieve permanent residency in Canada. Let's take a look at the most viable options for those aiming to work and settle in the country. 
1. Express Entry Express Entry continues to be one of the most efficient ways for skilled workers to secure PR in Canada. Through this points-based system, applicants are assessed on criteria like work experience, education, and language proficiency. The top-ranking candidates receive invitations to apply for PR through the Federal Skilled Worker Program, Federal Skilled Trades Program, or the Canadian Experience Class. If you've got solid qualifications and meet the eligibility requirements, Express Entry could be your fast track to permanent residency. Remember to keep your profile updated and complete with all required documents to boost your chances of receiving an invitation. 2. Provincial Nominee Programs, PNPs. Every Canadian province and territory has its own PNP that allows them to nominate individuals for permanent residency. PNPs cater to provincial labor market needs, making them a great option for foreign nationals with skills that are in high demand in certain regions. If you work in sectors like healthcare, technology, or agriculture, a PNP may be an ideal pathway for you. Eligibility requirements vary by province, so make sure to check the specific criteria for the province where you want to live. 3. Study Permits and PGWP Canada is an attractive destination for international students, and pursuing higher education in Canada can open doors to permanent residency. After completing your studies, you can apply for a post-graduation work permit, PGWP, which allows you to work in Canada and gain valuable experience. This work experience can then be used to apply for PR through the Canadian Experience Class or PNPs. Studying and working in Canada offers significant advantages in the immigration process, as Canadian education and work experience are highly valued. Foreign Anata? 4. Family Sponsorship If you have close family members who are already Canadian citizens or PR holders, they may be able to sponsor you for PR. Family sponsorship is available for spouses, common-law partners, dependent children, and parents. This is a great option for those seeking to reunite with family while obtaining residency. In conclusion, the end of the visitor work permit policy marks a major change in Canada's immigration landscape. While this policy was beneficial during the pandemic, its rollback signals Canada's effort to manage the temporary resident population and address concerns about misuse of the system. But don't worry, there are still plenty of pathways available for those looking to live, work, and settle in Canada. Whether it's through express entry, PNPs, study permits, or family sponsorship, your dream of making Canada your home is still within reach. And that's it for today's update. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on Canada immigration news and updates. Share this video with anyone who might need to know about this important news. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.